Reports have surfaced the CIA is backing the Syrian rebels' drive against the regime. What kind of assistance is the U.S. said to be providing? Look, even fishermen in Fiji knew about the CIA on the ground. This is absurd. This intelligence finding signed by Obama, that's the name, the, the code for a secret order. This was signed early this year, six months ago. So the fact that Reuters has only been allowed now to report about it proves that, uh, you know, there was high deliberations in Washington. OK, should we uh, let people know about what uh, they already know? In fact, the Washington Post two weeks ago had already reported about that. And in fact, when the CIA wants to leak something in the U.S., they usually go to the Washington Post. And there is a about the CIA and the Mossad on the ground working side by side with the Qataris, the Turks, the Saudi Arabians, and of course, the swarm of jihadis coming from everywhere, but especially across the border from Iraq. Everybody knew about this for months. So uh, the the picture that Washington wants to project that they are leading from behind, no, they are leading in the front lines alongside Al-Qaeda style jihadis, Qatari intelligence, Turk Turkish logistics, they are offering logistics for all these operations, and uh, what they are betting on, that's the most important thing. They are betting on a, a weakened uh, Syrian government in Damascus, sectarian war all over the place. If you just watch RT reports, this is the, the first impression. The do sectarian war is now all over. Please Mr. go ahead. Go ahead. Escobar, yes. Do you think it's legal and in accordance with international law? Or is it the tactic of waging proxy war, the one the U.S. has been using frequently, recently, for no, many no, years? Yes. Yeah, but look, there's, a, there's no semblance of uh, international law since uh, uh, what was decided in Libya last year. In fact, uh, the maneuvering and the wording of UN Resolution 1973 uh, authorizing war against Libya, a no-fly zone was actually war against Libya last year. That's the end of international law as we know it. Nation states don't matter anymore. We already knew that in terms of uh, financial capitalism. Now we have learned that in terms of international law protection nation states on a geopolitical level, this is gone. This is over. Now, you, if you are a neocolonial power like Britain and France or an empire like the U.S., you can trample on nations sovereignty anywhere, in anyhow, any place. And this is exactly what's happening. And that's why Russia has been opposed to it from the start, because Moscow sees that as the end of the, na the sovereignty of the nation states. A video has surfaced recently which shows an alleged execution of Assad supporters by Syrian rebels. It's hard to verify the footage, but uh, how often do you think have such incidents been happening in the conflict and uh, why do we receive reports about it so rarely? Uh, all the time. And in fact, I received this video as well from a source in, in, uh, in Arabic. Th then I, I asked for a translation. This, uh, it was uh, the Berry clan in Aleppo. This is a very important clan in northern Aleppo. And uh, some of them, they were executed in cold blood. This is what this two and a half uh, minute video shows, in fact. This is an extended clan. They have like 20,000 brothers, sisters, an extended family clan tribe, you know. So this means that all these people, instead of being recruited to the opposition, now they will be fighting the opposition because they are being executed in cold blood. And this explains, among other things, why Christians all over Syria now are taking up arms to defend themselves because they know if there is a pose Assad controlled by Sunni hardcore elements, including Salafi jihadists, this is what's going to happen. They're going to be unprotected minorities. And at the moment, they are protected minorities under the Assad government. And the Kurds, they were very clever. They broke a deal with the Assad government. They are not going to interfere in the war in northeast Syria, Kurdish territory. Now they are neutral. So this means that they knew if they... Uh, sided with the opposition, later on they would get a very rough deal. And if they went against Assad and Assad would prevail, they would also get a raw deal. So they now they are more or less intact in their air and they are protected. But most of them live in the northeast of Syria, which is very remote. The problem is mixed populations like Aleppo, big in, 
big center, two and a half million people, uh, Christians, uh, Alawites, uh, Sunnis, uh, even some Kurds, they all live together. And now the battle of Aleppo, how is it, the way it is developing, it could become an extended Lebanon in the 70s. It's the Lebanonization of whole tracts of northern uh, Syria, in fact. And this, by the way, is the Israeli strategy. Israel wants uh, Lebanonized and Somalized, like the new Somalia in Libya, a very weak country with sectarian strife all over the place, with uh, an overextended army, and of course, uh, innocuous against Israel. So this means uh, opening the way for an Israeli attack against Iran within the next few months, or perhaps 2013. All right, Pepe Escobar, correspondent for Asia Times Online. Pepe, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.